Hi, everyone. My name is Matt Haynes. I'm an audiobook narrator and uh, the world's tallest male narrator. This is a claim I'm going to uh, stake and stand by it until somebody else uh, feels like they can topple not only my six foot, 10 inch frame, but the tallness of my attitude as it comes through in the narration. Bring it. So short video from your tall narrator. Um, we are doing what is called the process project. This is where uh, I get to take a sample of an author's work and show you a little bit behind my curtain of how I approach things, including how I annotate the manuscript to help me along. Then the second video is where I get to interview the author and learn about their process for uh, writing the book in the first place. So uh, for this one, we have a sample from Dancing Butterfly by Deborah Parmley. And uh, this, uh, this work takes you right into the action. I mean, just right into the action. So I thought what would be a good focus for this video is how I approach action sequences where there is a sustained amount of chaos going on and where the mood is uh, definitely one of emergency fear we would call negativity, um, although you know, the experience is very positive for the, the reader and the listener. Um, so what do I do? What I tend to do is I have the, uh, the equals, uh, or not the equals, but the greater than, less than sign. And if it is the greater than before the text, what I do is I will have it be where the surprise is. So I'll put that in there as my cue of, okay, this is where the, everything changes and things get a little bit scarier, things get offset. And then the uh, lesser than is where, okay, we're just going to follow through now. It's it's okay. I've made my decision. You know, I'm the character. I've made my decision, and now we're just go 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 until we hit the next surprise, the next twist, and then it's the greater than. So uh, have a fun time following along. This is a good time to go full screen um, when you are uh, listening alongside how I uh, do the text, and enjoy this segment from Deborah Parmley's. Dancing Butterfly. Frank, positioned at the end of the bar farthest from the front door to watch for trouble, had angled himself so that Suki was right in front of him. He could still see in his peripheral vision past her to the left, to where his boss, Al, sat, and to the right to watch the front half of the club. Joe was there, but he was really supposed to watch the door more than the rest of the club. Occasionally, Frank would scan the whole club, but all was well, and he was giving Suki as much of his full attention as his job allowed. He looked into her pretty blue eyes and noted every nuance of her mood. This dame knew what she wanted, and she wanted him. Dinner was a sure bet, and odds were high on the after-dinner entertainment with this dancer being a different sort of dance requiring fewer clothes. She was just saying yes she'd have dinner with him when movement and noise in front of the club caught his attention. Hey, wait! The doorman raised his voice at a few men who'd stepped inside the club still wearing their overcoats. You gotta come back and check in at the door. Everyone had to remove their coat before entering to have it checked for big guns. Jack McGurn took no chances in his club, and tonight was Al's night to be in the club. These guys should have been stopped long before they were inside. Joe had been laughing with a busty redhead about something, and should have been up and over to stop the men if they went past the doorman. The man in front of the trio of outsiders turned back toward the doorman as if to answer, but then spun back around, whipping a tommy gun from beneath his overcoat and raised it before spraying. His first shots ripped into Joe, and his two partners behind him drew more weapons. Frank quickly reached for his 1911 beneath his suit jacket, at the same time he moved Suki behind him. Go, he said. Get downstairs. He stepped in front of her, blocking her with his body as he pulled his gun up to shoot. 
Suki ducked down as the first gunshots overhead exploded bar glasses and the mirror behind the bar, showering her and Tony with broken slivers while women screamed, the repeating rat -a -tat -tat of the Thompson submachine guns punctuating the women's screams. Everything was happening so fast and loud. She wanted to hide and cover her ears. The noise was deafening with the roar of the Tommy guns and the screams of the women, and she couldn't hear what Tony was shouting at her. Go through the tunnels, he shouted. I've never been, she shouted back. How do I get out? Tony put his head down as glass shattered above him, and then he looked at her again. Follow one of the men. Go, go on, blow. She ran down the steps toward safety, hurrying her right fist holding the earring and pushing off the wall next to her, she was almost to the bottom when she stepped out with her right foot off of two steps as if it were one and fell onto the concrete. Landing on the outer side of her foot as it rolled under, she fell hard onto the bone of her ankle, which cracked, sending a shock wave of pain from her foot all the way up her leg past her knee. She cried out her arms reaching to catch herself as she fell, but still she was falling. Her clenched fist failed to help her stop, and she landed on her forearm, the wind knocked out of her, and pandemonium raining down from upstairs. Suki, what are you doing on the floor? Get up! He was there. Frank, insisting she rise. You should have been gone when I told you to go. Come on, doll, and get up now. We gotta get out of here. She tried to rise again on her feet, not answering him as pain made tears run down her face, and she gasped. Baby, were you hit? His voice now held concern for her, in a tender tone she'd never have guessed in such a commanding man. Suki shook her head. No, I don't think so. He'd stepped in front of her and she saw his shoes and his cuffed pant legs before she looked up to where his arm was there, ready to help her up, his left hand helping her stand while his right held a tommy gun. Steady, he said. I got you. She looked up into his concerned brown eyes. I tried to run and fell on the stairs, turned my ankle and landed hard. I can't walk on it by myself. No time to look at it. Come on, we'll get you out of here. And that was, again, Deborah Parmley's Dancing Butterfly. And uh, you can find more about Deborah on DebraParmley.com. She's very prolific and very versatile. Um, and uh, you will then get to see the next video in this series where I get to interview her. Uh, in the meantime, I'm Matt Haynes. As your narrator, I hope that my voice and your ears meet again real soon.